This video is designed for Dobsonian telescope users with little or no previous experience. I also assume that your scope is the simplest Dobsonian design that lacks any automation electronics or tracking motors. These simple Dobsonians are commonly referred to as push to Dobs as you do the pushing to target objects rather than electronics or motors. Your Dobsonian telescope will most likely come in two parts, a base that can rotate clockwise or anti-clockwise and the optical tube that holds the mirrors. Some tubes are a single long cylinder while other tubes are in two parts and are collapsible to make the tube shorter for easier transport and storage. To set your telescope up, find a flat location with a view of the sky that is not too obstructed by buildings or trees. Also avoid setting up the telescope close to bright lights that you can't turn off. Next, place the tube on the base. Make sure the eyepiece holder and finder scope are located on the top side of the tube rather than the lower side. Screw in the two tensioning bolts to secure the optical tube to the base. Tighten the bolts just enough to create a little bit of resistance in the up-down movement of the tube. Too tight and you can't move the tube and too loose and it will bump up or down at the slightest touch. Now attach the small finder telescope. Lock it into position with the screw on its base. If your telescope has a collapsible tube, tilt the tube up to vertical, then loosen the locking screws on each extension rod, then grab the knobs on the bottom of the rim of the upper tube section and pull the section up to its full height. Now tighten the locking screws. Remove the dust cover or covers to expose the mirror. When it comes to actually finding an object in the sky to look at, the finder scope is the most important component of the entire telescope. If the finder scope is not set up properly, you will suffer nothing but frustration and find nothing to look at. The optical tube axis of both the finder scope and the main telescope need to be parallel and thereby both point exactly in the same direction as the other. The very first step in locating an object in the sky is to look through the finder scope and nudge the main telescope up, down or left and right until the target patch of sky is centred under the finder scope crosshairs. So if the optical axis of the finder scope and main telescope are not aligned parallel, they will each point to a different patch of the sky and you will never be able to get the main telescope pointed at the patch of sky you are seeking in the finder scope. Alignment of the finder scope and main telescope is best done before dark. Find the eyepieces for the main telescope. Select the one with the biggest millimetre number on it. This might be 25 millimetres or maybe 30 millimetres. Insert that eyepiece into the telescope eyepiece holder and tighten its locking screw. The eyepieces with the biggest numbers give you the widest field of view and therefore make it easier for you to find your target when looking through the main telescope. Find a pole or a tree with a distinctive shape at 100 or more metres away from the telescope. Nudge the main telescope up, down or left and right to roughly where the target pole or tree is. Now look through the finder scope and continue to more gently nudge the main telescope up, down, left, right until you have the pole or tree in view in the finder scope. Your finder scope is now aimed at your target tree or pole. However, your main telescope may or may not be also pointed at your target. Now look through the eyepiece on the main telescope and even more gently nudge the main telescope up, down, left or right until you see your alignment target, pole or tree. Now gently centre the tip of the pole or a distinctive tree branch into the very centre of the field of view of the telescope eyepiece. Without bumping the telescope, now look through the finder scope. You need the finder scope crosshairs to aim at the pole tip or tree branch you just pointed the main telescope to. You achieve this by moving the crosshairs in the finder scope rather than moving the actual telescope. On the finder scope you will find two adjustment screws and a third spring-loaded point that you can't adjust. Again, without bumping the main telescope, 
slowly screw the adjustment screws in or out so as to make the crosshairs move across the field of view and sit over your target pole top or distinctive branch. Now look through the telescope eyepiece again and make sure both the main telescope and the finder scope crosshairs are pointing at precisely the same target point. Adjust the finder scope screws again if necessary. Once the finder scope and main scope are aligned, they will require little adjustment the next time you set the telescope up. You are now ready to start seeking objects to observe through your telescope. The very first time you use your Dobsonian telescope, I recommend you target just the moon. You can easily find the moon in the finder scope and then the main telescope. Then experiment with the eyepieces so you learn what happens with magnification and the width of the telescope's field of view as you swap from longer focal length eyepieces, say 25 millimeters, down to shorter eyepieces such as a 10 millimeter. Learn how to adjust the focuser to bring the telescope eyepiece view into sharp focus. Also learn how to gently nudge the main telescope every 30 seconds or so to keep your target object in view. However, finding most other celestial targets can be much more challenging. City light pollution makes the background sky much brighter than country skies. And since most celestial objects you want to observe are also rather faint, very many of the objects you want to observe may not be observable from within the city as they are no brighter than the light polluted background sky. So once you know how to operate your telescope, try and take it to a dark, unpolluted night sky location. I recommend your first task is then to learn the imaginary plumb bulb technique. This will make finding targets much easier than aimlessly nudging the telescope tube all over the place trying to find your desired target. Initially practice this technique to find and observe bright stars. Using just your eyes, locate a bright star in the sky you would like to see through the telescope. To make this technique easier to use, pick a star roughly 45 degrees above the horizon. Don't pick a star high above your head just yet. Now rotate the telescope tube clockwise or anti-clockwise to point towards the target star. Now step a couple of paces behind the rear of the telescope tube. Take a look at your target star and drop an imaginary plumb bob line down from the star towards the horizon. You want your imaginary vertical line to pass through the target star and the centre access line of the telescope tube. Nudge the tube left or right to align with your imaginary plumb bob line. Now you need to look through the finder scope and gently lift the telescope up or down to bring your bright target star into view. Then nudge the telescope to centre the star under the finder scope crosshairs. Now insert your longest focal length eyepiece into the telescope. That will probably be your 25mm eyepiece. Look through the eyepiece and focus the image and your target star should be visible. You can then change to a shorter focal length eyepiece, providing higher magnification, once you have the target initially centred in your wider field of view eyepiece. Using the imaginary plumb bob technique will take you about 15 seconds, but could save you oodles of frustration and wasted time at the eyepiece. Also, always initially starting with your widest field of view telescope eyepiece simplifies the task. The advantage of the plumb bob technique is that it lets you initially find the target in the finder scope by just moving the telescope up and down to bring the target into the finder scope's field of view. The moment you start needing to also search left and right, as well as up and down, frustration and lost time starts to mount. You will observe twice as many objects in an evening using the plumb bob technique compared to the frustrating random up, down, left, right search method. However, the plumb bob technique does become harder to use when your desired target is very high in the sky directly above you. Finding faint objects uses much the same technique. 
However, before planning an evening of observing faint objects, such as nebulae and faint star clusters, I suggest you learn how to operate a planetarium map such as Sky Safari. In this video, I won't explain how to drive the Sky Safari app, as there are plenty of YouTube videos covering that. But a planetarium app will be extremely helpful to understanding what objects are above you and where they are in the night sky. Fainter objects are not visible to the naked eye. As a result, success with the plumb bob technique is a little more challenging. There are two approaches. One is called star hopping, and the second is just hoping. There is a big difference between hopping and hoping. Star hopping involves you locating an initial bright star located close to your desired target object. This bright star will be your starting point. You then need one or perhaps a few stars on your planetarium map that can lead you to the location of your desired target from your initial bright star point. Think of it as joining the dots. Start by locating a bright naked eye star that will be your starting point and centering it under the crosshairs of your finder scope. Now refer to your planetarium app and determine which directions you need to nudge the finder scope to the next star in your join the dot sequence to your desired target. This can require some mental gymnastics. Repeat the process, still only using the finder scope, until you can nudge the scope from your last star hop star to the location of your ultimate faint target object. So this is a sequence of hops from star to star to reach your final target. Now you are ready to look through the actual telescope eyepiece, but make sure it is your longest focal length eyepiece to start with. You can then swap to a higher magnification eyepiece once you have found your target. Learning how to use your planetarium app is invaluable for success with the star hopping method. The star hoping method is a bit more hit or miss. Use your planetarium app to show you where your faint target object is in the sky relative to some nearby naked eye stars. Now go straight to the plumb bob method to point the telescope as best you can to the target object location. Then using the finder scope, move the telescope up or down to center the object under the finder scope crosshairs. If the target is too faint to be seen through the finder scope, you can conduct the up-down search directly through the main telescope eyepiece. However, occasional success is accompanied by frequent frustration when trying the HOPE method. This method commonly reverts to a somewhat random up-down left-right search pattern and lots of wasted time. If you can master the imaginary plumb bob technique, you are well on your way to mastering the PUSH-2 Dobsonian telescope. I wish you clear skies and countless successful observations.